What's good, King Gandhi? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson back at it again with another collaboration. And as you guys have been asking for me for a few months, some of you to bring on this very powerful brother, I believe he has the best content on repatting and doing business in Africa. He's even better than me. And you know, I'm an expert. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking notes from this brother. Very powerful brother. I'll let him introduce who he is and then we'll come back. Hey, what's going on, O'Shea? I appreciate it, man. Appreciate the uh, the kind words. Uh, my name is Jay Cameron. I'm the founder of Maximum Impact Enterprises, where we are bridging the gap between Africa and the African diaspora. And we do this by way of uh, travel experiences to the continent of Africa and other African diaspora destinations. But really, this is a, uh, it's a labor of love and it's an understanding uh, of the things that we, those of us who are part of the African diaspora, uh, can, can really glean from. Uh, the continent of Africa, many different things that we've been told that have been inaccurate, um, but then also helping us to understand how we can uh, take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves uh, that are present, I should say, on the continent. And uh, and and so that's the deal. I mean, and um, and I just love being able to connect folks and, and have people come and have these different experiences. All right, give him a round of applause, editors. And uh, and guys, you know, we're he's in. I'm in Uganda. We're he's in Ghana. Uh, just let y'all know we're shooting this a second time because the Wi-Fi is struggling, but we wanted to make sure that the information that the brothers given was very clear and digestible for you uh, on this interview. So we are here trying to get this out for the brothers and sisters out there all across the diaspora. Brother Jay, um, you're doing an excellent job with Maximum Impact. I reviewed some of your videos here right on this channel. I think you're an amazing content creator. And you're a brother that has a very unique perspective on um, how to do things um, in Africa. You've been to many uh, countries with your business, but you also have a story because you came to Africa uh, quite late in your life. Um, where are you from originally? I'm from uh, the D.C. area. I was born in uh, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. So okay. shout out to all my Gullah Geechee folks. But then I'm uh, but I'm also but I'm D.C. Go Go Chuck Brown. Um, okay. Yeah. I did. So D.C. is where I'm from. DC, okay, and um, you, you, what was Jay Cameron doing? Because usually I like to ask, you know, what got you going to Africa? But I wanted, what were you doing before you even came to the continent? So what, what was your life like? Well, they, they uh, the joke among all of my peers and everything, a serial entrepreneur. But I'd been doing so many different things. I've always had a heart for the community and wanting to uh, educate and empower. But I, I ran summer camps. I wrote stage plays. Um, back, if you go back 30 some odd years, I used to uh, be a club promoter, party promoter, uh, and just done a lot, you know, to really help uh, just our, our youth. You know, that was a lot, really a lot of what I did. I sponsored several uh, book bag drives, the 10,000 uh, book bag giveaway in the D.C. area. And, uh, okay. and so that was what I was doing beforehand. But, you know, sometimes when you get to a certain point in life, you you've been doing certain things in a routine and that's what would happen. I was been on this routine. I was doing the same thing year after year. And I knew I'd never been to the continent of Africa, but I would hear uh, so many come and say, well, okay, one day I want to get there on, on my bucket list. And I didn't want to get there on my bucket list. I was like, well, let, let me try and go a little bit, you know, before, because you never know when the bucket is coming, when you're going to kick the bucket. And so you don't right. know. So I was like, well, let, let me just, um, let me go. But, I was afraid because I had never really traveled outside of the continental U.S. other than going out to the Caribbean. I've been on a couple mm -hmm. of cruises and, and you know, it, it, the safe things, you know. And so me thinking about getting on a plane and flying 10 hours on a plane and going to this place where they're telling us they don't like us and all these other things. Uh, it was a mental hurdle that I had to overcome, but I was determined to do it because I just didn't okay. want other people's perspectives to, to govern how I was living. Uh, and that, and that's so, in, so. So to answer your question, that's what I was doing beforehand. And then when it was time for me to make that step or take that step, I knew uh, it was something I had to do. People tease me and everything. Why are you going to Africa? Uh, and Adam saying people coming over to Africa, you know. So, uh, so it's like, uh, okay. but but I'll okay. tell you this: it, it was the best decision that I could have made in my life. The best decision. Okay. Okay. Now that party promoting that you did 30 years ago, that's going to come in handy later on in the discussion, right? So I want to talk about okay. that later on because sure. I believe that skill is going to come into your first trip. But let's let's kind of talk about 
um, you, you're, I believe in your mid forties when you, you're first, cause people always, you know, message us, is it too late for me to come? You know, 40, 50, something like that. You came at age 45 uh, to Ghana. What was your first experience like in Ghana when you first came? Uh, I was upset because it took me so long to get there. I, I was, I was, was, as soon as I stepped off the plane, I, I was like, what was I waiting on? And everyone was so nice. Everyone was, you know, there were some things that I had heard that I'd seen, you know, so there were some things that were confirmed, but I, I, was, I got what, what were those that things that, that were confirmed? Can you can you talk about? Oh, that? like the rough roads and everything, you know, the, the, you get out there and the roads bumpy. And so that was some stuff that I had seen, um, you know, the, the red clay. So it's like when people tell narratives or when they frame it, they will show you just one thing. And that's mm-hmm. what you're thinking everything is. But then right. when I got off and I was like, well, they, they, they have regular cars like everybody else and they have cell phones and internet and satellite dishes and restaurants and mm-hmm. and and everything is, you know, pretty much the same way or the, the same things that I'm used to. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my mindset started shifting immediately. It was it was like, okay. let me look at this through a different set of eyes. And then what really did was when I saw all the Europeans, Asians and, and, and everybody else and I was like, right. wait a minute. Y'all here, right. so I know whenever I see somebody, you know, if I see someone from, from China, I'm like, right. oh, y'all following the money. So I knew at that point, I said, okay, here we go. I said, this is okay. this is what's going on. And and then when I realized many of the businesses were owned and operated mm-hmm. by foreign interests and okay. weren't owned by the locals, I said, hmm. And okay. then that's when I started understanding colonization better, imperialism, because these are things we don't really talk about in our community. Right in the U.S. So okay, yeah, okay, and that's going to be important to come back to a little bit later. But let's talk about the opportunity. So you get there. Uh, most people always say, make sure that you like your first trip. You like where you're going to be. So you liked it enough to say that I would like to at least come back again, or I'd like to at least visit. And I know that on our uh, we were talking a little bit before you you got inspired. Um, to do your first trip to bring people to Africa. What gave you that particular motivation? I was sitting in a restaurant in Kumasi, Ghana, and I knew, I said, I have a responsibility for for my people to see this uh, and and, and for them to have this exposure. Because remember, here I am, midlife, if you will, and hadn't had this exposure. All I knew was America. And whatever America wanted to present itself to me, my mindset, my my way of thinking was American. And it was really, you know, kind of veiled in white supremacy because it was kind of like, well, America was better than everybody else in America. But at the same time, I'm not able to really partake of all of what America has to offer per se. So it was, it was kind of like, I had to start shedding this um, mindset that America was supreme or superior to everyone else. And that it was, literally these other places had a tremendous value uh and so from there i said okay. i know my people need to come and see I, I, and and, and okay. if i wasn't going to do it who was going to do it you know with me having an understanding that right. i had okay so let's go back to your prior um career as a party promoter you putting together events in the dc area um i guess you, were, you know maybe in your, your early teens at that time and so you're doing that and now you're trying to merge into the tourism business and one thing i want to know is um i see a lot of african americans doing tours in accra probably even more now than when you started just briefly was the was it competitive then as it is now or was it more of an open market at that time oh it was probably more of an open market uh then and then now, now, now I'm going to break some stuff down for you. I'm going to tell you how interesting this gets. You know, it, okay. it's, uh, it was not, not particularly competitive, but what I found to be interesting, like now, the, and it's really kind of sad because, you know, we, it's enough room for everyone and there's enough room to go around. But, you know, a lot of the, the, the a lot of the, if you want to call them haters, actually come from black Americans. That's where it's like you, you get this thing and you just kind of shake your head like, wow, what is going on? You know, brothers and sisters getting territorial. I said, now nah. I said, y'all acting real. 
Okay, we, we got to do that for a whole episode. Like I, I, I got to get an exclusive on that one, brother. I got it. That's that right I, there. That, that topic. I, I knew that was right up your alley. I, I, you, you, you know I need to deal with that one. So, okay, so it wasn't as competitive as it is now. So mm -hmm. uh, shortly thereafter, you know, let's go back to having that skill because you had attempted to be a business person. And I see people like yourself and me, people who have at least tried business in America. When we get to someplace else, there are some challenges, but we kind of are a little bit more able to adjust. How did that first career of being a party promoter help you market your trip that you actually seem like you sold out, right? The first one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. First yeah. trip, selling out the tour. That's it. That's a, yeah. I don't even know. We, I don't even think Ken Ghana can sell out their sell out our old tour. We've been around for six years, you know. So how did you do that with, you know, how did that skill of having a party promotion, club promotion, how did that intertwine into, you know, marketing your first event? Well, what the one thing I knew is the messaging, you know, marketing is my background. So anytime you if you're a party promoter, concert promoter, business promoter, anything that you're doing, your messaging is important. And so I was able to take all of the years uh, and, and people have followed me and they knew. And so when I said, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going and really speaking to a lot of the the, the points of what people were interested in. They were like, well, you know, we trust you and we're going to go. And so they came, they came, they had a good, had a great time. We had ages uh, from ages eight to 89 on that particular tour, eight to 89. Okay. And, uh, and I tell people all the time when it comes to business, a lot of the principles are the same, but it's just the messaging is what you're talking about. And if you have a level of credibility and if people can sense when you have credibility, they can feel, okay. you know, they can feel when somebody's about the money or when they're really about the experience. And one of the reasons okay. why we've been so, so successful is that we emphasize the experience and people are willing to pay the money because they know that they're going to get the experience. And, um, so we built on that. I produced a video called the Ghana Chronicles after my first trip uh, to okay. Ghana. I produced that video and that video uh, went somewhat viral and it resonated with a lot of people. They were like, yeah, wow, this brother from, you know, from the States and he went over and, and this was his experience. And so what it did was it connected and that helped to, uh, you know, give people the confidence to go and travel with us on that first trip. So let me just make sure the the first trip it came was it people mainly coming from the DC area that you knew personally? No, these so people was, came so, from all, all over Vegas, California. Oh, okay, Philly. were you already YouTubing at that time? No, or, no, not not heavily. No, no, not at all. No, that was I was a, uh, all I did was put out that one video about the Ghana Chronicles, and that took off. That was that's what did it. Oh, and, oh, and okay, I mean, but for your very first trip, because the Ghana yeah. Chronicles came after that. You mean after my not, no the Ghana Chronicles came before the very first group tour, but it came after my first personal trip. Oh, I understand now. I get it. So you put yourself out there, went to Ghana. Here's my experience. Boom. Then it sold the second time. Wow. Okay. So um, first, okay. So first trip. Then uh, we then you have a did you have a second trip or was it COVID? COVID. COVID. That okay. Was let's it. talk COVID. about that. All right. Let's talk about that because I, I was I was here in COVID. I was one of the few creators. Uh, you ever heard of Kevin Samuels before? Yeah, yeah, of course. Kevin Samuels was, was a really close friend of mine, and okay. um, we we were bragging about how uh, when other people were were selling their 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 their, their, their cars and houses and stuff, we was making a lot of money as content creators. And uh, um, and tourism and events, all of that went down the drain. So here you were, had a very successful tour business, had sold out the first trip. People were playing around. Tanzania was still open. I think Ghana, Uganda that closed down. Um, how did you handle that particular situation after having such a great experience the first time out? How did you handle that? Yeah, that was tough. That was really tough because I was geared up for 2020 to be the year. You know, it's like, okay, we came out blazing in 2019 on that first tour. Then here comes uh, 2020 in March. And we were getting ready for like, you know, later in the year, uh, big tours happening. And then um, March happens, everything shuts down. I was like, okay, all right. I said, well, I got to make a decision. I said, now either I can stay home like everybody else and ride this out, or I can double down, go lay my foundation. And then when this thing comes back to life, then I'll be in position uh, to be able to take advantage of it. So what I did during that time, I said, I'm going back over to uh, Africa. And so I went to Tanzania first and I went to Cote d'Ivoire and then I went to Ghana. 
So what I did uh, was I started laying the foundation in Tanzania. I said, this is going to be something, you know, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. So I'd already had a connection to Tanzania. So then I said, let's, you know, start building the team and going through that whole process. Same thing in Cote d'Ivoire, same thing in Ghana. But what was happening is that while the world was shut down, I'm laying the foundation and I decided, this is when I decided to start doing a little bit more on uh, YouTube. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot. It was just kind of like, okay, you know, here's something that's going on, um, you know, just to kind of keep myself out there. But in January of 2021, I said, let me mm -hmm. just go and do a, a, a live session and see if anybody's interested in going to Ghana. I said, let me just put it out there. I said, I'm, we're all stuck in the house. We're all sitting here doing, you know, just like you were saying, content creators. So I put it out there and people started signing up to go to Ghana. And I still repurposed that same video that I had, the Ghana Chronicles. I put, kept putting that out there because it was still fresh. Uh, had a lot of attention, a lot of eyes on it. And so come June 2021, um, did the first COVID tour to Ghana. And so it had only seven people, but I was like, okay, now for some people that's like, well, you know, I'm not gonna do it because it's seven people. I was like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna build on this. So I, did, I ran a series of uh, tours. I did June 2021, okay. July 2021, August 2021, October 21, and then November 2021. By the time we got to November, we had over 25 people on the tour. By the time, so we, at each tour, it kept increasing. Whoa. So it, every tour, it kept going from, so it went to seven, then the 20, then the 25, then it, just, it, so it just kept growing. And this is in 2021. Now remember, people still at home. People still like, no, I'm not leaving. But there were other people who were like, no, I'm going, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to. And so then we started getting these interviews uh, and people sharing their experiences. And then other businesses were watching, other tour operators they were watching. And, um, and they saw, you know, they were like, wow, okay. Um, I started traveling to other countries in Africa during that time as well. Went down to South Africa, went to Egypt. I took advantage of the latter part of 2021 and said, we're just going to go for it. I need to explore. And what we want to do is to have more offerings because once somebody goes to one country, they're going to want to go to another country and they're going to want to go to another country. And, uh, and so that's what happened. And then by the time 2022 kicked in, it just went to a completely different level. And then by the time 2023, it just like in the past two and a half years, uh, it exploded because the, cause one people were cooped up in the house. And that's what I knew from understanding the stock market that when that, when, when the travel market depressed, the way that it did. I said, this thing is gonna come back on fire. I said, this, I said, I don't know how it's gonna do it. I said, but right. when people are ready to travel, they're gonna come out of this thing in, on, on a completely different level. And that's exactly what happened. Okay, so I'm in the content creation business full stop. So I've you know been in it off and on 10 years. What, what you have done is something remarkable because you changed, you were a person not even wanting to get on a plane and go to Africa or Europe or any place like that to creating a, a travel brand, a tourism brand for that. And uh, so what are some of the challenges? Cause you're coming into a different industry that you don't really know in a hostile, I won't say a hostile uh, in environment it could be, but uh, can I mean, be. definitely Uganda could be definitely very hard to do business. I will say it, yeah. it is definitely, no, I, I will use the word hostile. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> I was going to tell the truth. That's it's correct. Hostile. Yeah, it's very hostile business environment. No, and you're, you're trying to learn two things at the same time, at least when I'm coming here, I know how the business works every day. I'm just learning how to do things here. You're coming in a whole different industry. You need partners, you need people to take you around, you need um, people to transport the people. How do you do all of that in such a short period of time and excel at it in an industry that you don't know? That's a great question. And uh, sometimes I ask myself that. Sometimes late at night, I just lay there and I laugh, I said, this is something that I, you couldn't have scripted this. I, I, if somebody would have told me this, you know, five years ago, that this would have played out, I'd have laughed, I'd have I'd laughed them away from me, like, we're serious. But, um, but I think that when I saw all of the uh, foreigners, when I say foreigners, when I say the Asians and Lebanese and, and, and Europeans, and I, when I saw them here, I said, if they can do it, I know I can do it. And I said, this isn't even their land to do it, but they're coming here and they're setting up shop as if they own the joint. And literally they do own the joint. But for me, I'd been afraid 
And so I something something clicked. It something clicked. And I said, I'm going to put the time in. I'm going to do what I need to do. And I said, I, I remember telling a, a childhood friend of mine, I said, I said, I'm going to be successful on the continent of Africa. I said, I don't care what it takes. I said, because I said, my ancestors in America, uh, they bled and died for me to have the opportunities to be able to travel the world and do all of these different things. I said, but I'm sitting here afraid to go anywhere. And I said, they are the ones who paved the way for me to have the passport and to have the resources to do it. I said, but then I have my ancestors on the continent who died and lost their villages and lost all of these different things. And I said, I, ha I have a responsibility on both sides. So something internally kicked in that I didn't know was even there. Uh, and I was just determined to learn. I went to classes, I went to seminars that talked about doing business in Africa. Um, it was very unconventional. It was not something that I saw anybody else doing on the level that I was doing it. And I, and I wasn't even thinking about the expense that was coming along with it. I just knew that if we delivered a quality product that people would come. It was like my, I didn't wake up in the morning thinking about the money. I didn't wake up, oh man, how many people did we? It was just like, let me just do the very best that I can do for my people. And then also for the people on the ground, let me take care of the people on the ground. And, and so, so really that's how it is, you know, establishing relationships with folks on the ground, making sure that they understand you know i'm just not this i'm not coming here to save y'all we're not here we're not on that type of time we're here to collaborate and work together and uh and i have i i will tell you man i have some of the best folks that i could ever imagine uh to work with and it, it's 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 even hard for me sometimes when i think about it it's like i have folks on the ground scouting out other countries and they're local, they're from the continent, but then I also have right. a team that's from the US. So it's not like I'm yeah. leaving one or the other, you know, it's not like, it, it's right. like we're really working together to make this thing happen. And uh, so that, that, but I have gone through the foolishness now. I've been scammed, uh, I've been, you know, <laughs> spent too much money on things and uh, have people not show up and say they were gonna show up. And you know the routine, it, it, I've gone through all of the, the bumps and the bruises, oh, yeah. but every time I go through it, I'm just determined that much more to not quit because I meet somebody who does not operate like that. I mean, some of my early tour right. guys that I work with, they were trying to, you know, scam business from me and all of that. And, you know, they still do it, you know, but you, you learn and you just keep persevering and you say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm determined to win at this. Let me, let me go back to a very important thing that you said. And this is what has been um, somewhat of my success with, you know, with King Gandhi here. But um, you said that I don't look at the money or how much money that it is. And I think a lot of times when people look at opportunity in Africa, they look at it like a like a lick or something like it's a you know what I mean? Like it's a get in and kind of get out thing. It's like the dope game in the 80s, go in there and ball and come back. But it's very few entrepreneurs that I hear even say what you're saying, which is you're looking to establish value and you're looking to establish that you're doing an excellent job with your brand. And of course, if you can do that, the money takes care of itself. Um, why do why do you have that particular um, vantage point? And so many of them, even Africa don't in business. Why, why, why is it that you have that particular vantage point and others you feel like don't? Oh, well, I, I mean, I've come I grew up in the eighties. I've been, you know, hustle, you know, you hustle. I used to sell watermelons out the back of a U-Haul truck. So I sold 800 watermelons, uh, in 95, Labor Day, 95. So I, out of the back of a U-Haul truck. So I know what it's like to hustle. And what I see people doing is hustling to survive versus really creating value. And when, and when you create value, that's when you can, um, charge the price and people will not really complain. If you give them the value, they'll say, okay, I trust you. Uh, and so because of that, and I think because I've had a level of success in business and having gone through the whole hustle mindset, because I see a lot of that in, in the tourism space, folks just hustling. They take their last penny trying to, you know, trying to put a tour together. And I just refuse to operate like that because you can feel it. You can feel when somebody's trying to, you know, hustle you for, you know, on a tour, you know, so there are times I'll spend money that might be above the budget in order to make sure the experience is right. You know, there, there are times right. where 
I have to go and, um, you know, it, it was an expense I didn't intend on. But guess what? I've had people travel with me in these past two years. I've had people travel with me four times to the continent of Africa. Four times. Whoa. Four times. So that tells So I'm like, well, if I take care of folks, then we're going to be good. And, and they right. bring their family and friends and they say, come on. We know that if I'm going with Jay, I'm not going to get scammed. I'm not going to go. And uh, if, if something does go wrong or whatever, he's going to make sure that he does all he can to make it right. So so mm-hmm. people feel comfortable with that. Now, flip side, I don't play games because people have because, you know, our folks have come with the scams and all types of little, you know, so we so they quickly find out that I'm not that dude either. You know, I, right. it's like. Right, it's like, like don't cut, don't try to t- talk the black thing. Hey, we want to support a black business. And then the next minute you're trying to tear it down. So I'll go there too. It's like, yo, don't look. look we, if we're gonna do this, let's do it right. Let's right. respect each other's efforts. We all work it hard, and so we attract those types of people. And the people who want to play games, we don't necessarily attract. Um, but it's, but, but those who see what we're doing, because that's the one thing we want to be a, a shining light for our community. So when people see it, it's like, you know, we're not out here hustling, trying to just get over on somebody. But at the same time, we're not going to get hustled either. You know, so it's like it's it's we're here to bring we're really here to bridge this information gap, but then also the experience gap. And and when I see a family, I've watched grandchildren, children and their grandparents all come on the same trip. I'm looking at seven people right there on the same trip, generational. And I'm not thinking, I'm not calculating, okay, how many thousands of dollars is that right there? I'm thinking, wow, this is somebody who did not have to go their whole life into their 40s in order to discover that this world is bigger than what's happening on American plantation. I I, I know I said it, I said it. Um, But but it's like we're able to get outside of that and see that the world is much larger than than oftentimes what we can even imagine. Well, let me just ask you this. Because, you know, when I came to Uganda, you know, my mom, she was at first crying and stuff. You know, she was thinking somebody's going to do some voodoo to me and things like that. But I largely saw opportunities here that I have never seen, you know, in my life. And there's still more opportunities than um, um, than we can get. I mean, obviously, you got to, you know, in order for you to have an opportunity, you have to be able to maximize it and, and take part in it. But um, it's so many opportunities here and it's so many things the continent needs. Um, that you just can't get it all. Literally, you just cannot get it all. Every day we have to leave something on the table because we just can't get it all. Yeah. Um, now, how? I, now you. Now let me kind of get back to to, to to this question, right? Because you you talked about your family making fun of you and uh, and and people and friends that oh, yeah. you, know, you leave in D.C. to go to Africa. Now, now, how do they see? your life now and the opportunities you have availed yourself in comparison to when they first was mocking you. Oh, well, now everybody's a believer. Everybody's like, oh, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're proud of you, Jay. Man, we are excited. We are, oh, man, you doing the daggone thing. You know, it's, and and, and when you're a pioneer with something, you just, that's, that's what comes with the territory. And you can't even, I knew that it was, I knew the le- when I started getting the level of mockery and and all of that that came with it, I was like, all right, cool, well, y'all y'all know how I do it, and and now uh, you know we employ people. And I know I, I don't employ anybody who was mocking me. I will say that now, but but it was it was just one of those things. It comes with the territory, and that's what we have to learn, especially as uh, and I say this especially as black people, we have to learn how to stand up in the face of, of when people in, in the face of ridicule, because I know the cultures that we came from. I know the education system that we came from. And I knew that these people didn't know any better. I knew that they were just talking from their own, you know, whatever someone else has said to them. So now it's, uh, and even when people mock, I just kind of laugh now. It's just kind of, hey, y'all can say whatever y'all want to say about me because uh, I'm not on that particular grind anymore. I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not having to, um, I'm not lost. If I, I should say it like that, I have uh, discovered uh, an amazing life that I didn't even know existed. And I the one lesson I take away from it is that it, whenever someone pushes back that hard, it's like, well, there must be something good for me on the other side because because I've had people say, you need to get back over here to your tribe in America and you need to get back over here. And then I don't know why you over there and we, and I'm saying to myself, you know, I, I can claim multiple 
mm-hmm. if tribes, if you will. That's one of the beautiful parts about being a, a black American or a, bl- a black American from the diaspora is because I can claim both. I don't right. have to pick one or the other. And and you talked about the opportunities. Right. There are opportunities that are bound for black Americans in ways that we don't even know because we're having to pick a side. And I'm like, well, y'all can pick a side. I said, because there's, there's on both sides. Uh, my ancestors come from both sides and I love both sides and I respect and honor both sides, even with the challenges, even with the things that I've seen, even with the foolishness and the nonsense and the ugh, all of that. I'm still determined to make sure that, uh, that that we're represented properly. And and that's what fuels me, man. So it's, and the money is a byproduct that that comes with it. Just, you know, that's just a part of it. But it's the re- results, and, um, and and when I see people come and and, and what that many people have come and moved to the continent after coming on our tours, they've moved. I mean, literally wow. uprooted their life and moved. Some have moved to South Africa. Some have moved to Ghana. Um, some have moved to uh, Tanzania. Some people mm-hmm. find probably in Zanzibar. So you know, I I just do what I'm supposed to do, and you know, it is what it is. Okay. I won't hold you too much longer, but I, I want to just ask one last question about, um, you know, Maximum Impact Tours. I see all the successes. I know you recently was able to link up in Atlanta with, uh, with Search for Uhuru, another brother that's very powerful in the, in the sector. Why should somebody choose Maximum Impact to, to come to Africa? You, you offer tours to many different places, right? Go ahead and tell them, before you answer that question, what, where do you offer your, your tours at? Uh, primarily uh, the continent of Africa. So we're in Egypt, Tanzania, Kenya, uh, Ghana, South Africa, Togo, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Nigeria, Senegal, Gambia, Morocco. So uh, so that's a, a, our Africa uh, tours. We also do, uh, going to be introducing our Black London, Black Paris, our Black Spain, Black Portugal, our Black Amsterdam. We also going to be, uh, we also go to Brazil. We go to Salvador uh, in the state of Bahia. We also go to Rio and uh, Salvador, um, uh, Brazil is actually the country that has the largest population of Africans outside of the continent of Africa. Most people didn't know that, or a lot of people I should say don't know that. Uh, we're going to Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica. Uh, so we have a lot happening uh, within our, our total uh, travel portfolio. But uh, the reason why I believe people should choose Maximum Impact is because it's not just a tour. It's not just a trip. We put a lot of time and energy into planning the small details to make it where for somebody who's a first time traveler, international traveler, then we actually offer culture trainings for you. So you don't show up on the continent and you're not prepared. So we take the time to think, okay, culturally, what do we understand from where we come from? And then what can you expect when you arrive in these different countries? Because when you hear Africa, it's very different. Egypt is very different from South Africa. It's very different from Senegal. So we have we prepare you and and by us preparing you, what ends up happening is it makes your experience that much more enjoyable. It takes the anxiety out of it. So now all you have to do is focus on if you need a visa, you get your visa. If not, you get on the plane and you come and then we take care of the rest and we make it the best experience for you. And that's something that you really can't put a price tag on that either. Because the one thing you don't want to do is go to Africa on the cheap and you show up and you think you're going on a cruise to the Caribbean. And then you show <laughs> up and about, yeah, I'm here. And then they, well, well, where are my towels at? And where is this going on? It's like, no. see, it should have been with maximum impact. Yeah, you don't really want that. So I'll definitely put the uh, the YouTube channels also by the same name. It is Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron, almost at 40,000 subscribers. Go check him out there. We'll put the Instagram there below. And again, brother, I know you're a very busy person. Shout out to Ward and Maya for, make, for making this connection happen. He yes, you did it. Both of us. So, and I just want to say, man, I really love what you do. And um, you just, you're a very talented brother to figure something like tourism, which is something I, I'm very afraid of. Uh, you know, I don't want to get the tourism business. I told you, if you ever decide to bring a tour to Uganda, yeah, as yeah, long as they have to deal with you, I don't want to deal with nobody on the tour, okay, at all. Because I, I've heard horror stories from. I don't want to deal with it, but you know, but but I really think what you're doing to do it in, to do it in multiple countries is crazy. I, I don't even want to do it in one, but for you to do it in like almost like 15 or 16, it's, it's, it's absurd. And then that short period of time to build those systems is crazy. So uh, thank you so much, brother. Any any last words you want to say here? Well, well, I want to thank you for uh, inviting me to share uh, on your platform. I respect and know all the, all the work that goes into building a platform. So I thank you and I appreciate you 
for recognizing the hard work that goes into it because I mean you you hit the nail on the head you understand it and we need more and more voices out here uh, just making uh, us aware you know wherever we're from you know whatever ethnicity we are uh, just more and more voices being able to share our story so I appreciate that for those who are watching uh, I do thank you for taking the time to watch and, and as O'Shea said before, um, you can find me at Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron on YouTube. We have a lot of fun content over there and and we dive into topics that uh, that sometimes might be a little controversial. But you know what? Hey, it is what it is. We live one time on this side and the best thing we can do is continue to share information so we can improve our lives and we can have the best experiences while we have our, this time on uh, on this earth so that's what i have to say man i appreciate it uh, again shout out to Walter maya he did make the connection so uh appreciate you bro thank you for that and uh, i'm coming out to uganda how about that that's what we're gonna do i'm yeah. coming out there. i'm gonna come hang out with you yeah yeah i told you i got you so we, we talked about that and uh, we've had so many people come what my came this year we had uh, go black to africa so okay go black okay yeah 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 Yeah, we, we put you on the uganda hall of fame man that, that come through the king <laughs> That's what's up. Dusty Studios over here. Uh, so, yeah, we love to have you, brother. And thank you so much. And keep on doing what you're doing. All right. Thank you.